I would now ask for members' statements. The member from Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to take this opportunity to speak about Carol Youssef Wojtyla, uh, known to the world as Pope St. John Paul. April 2nd of each year has been designated a day in his honour in Ontario. Through his tireless efforts, John Paul II is recognized as helping to end communism rule in his native Poland and eventually throughout all of Europe. He was born in Poland on May 18, 1920, and served as Pope of the Catholic Church from October 16, 1978 until his death on April 2nd of 2005. It is one of those dates that I have in my memory that I know exactly where I was when this sad news was delivered. He dedicated his life and papacy to the international understanding, peace, and the defense of equality and human rights. John Paul II significantly improved the Catholic Church's relations with Judaism, Islam, Eastern Orthodox Church, and the Anglican Communion. His love for young people brought him to establish World Youth Days. The 19 World Youth Days celebrated during his pontificate brought together millions of young people from all over the world. He was one of the most traveled world leaders in history, visiting 129 countries during his pontificate, including Canada. And I do remember myself sleeping outside in the rain down in Downsville, waiting for his arrival in Mass back when I was 13 years old. John Paul II's beatification Mass took place at St. Peter's Square on May 1, 2011, and he was canonized on 27th of April, 2014. Mr. Speaker, as a Canadian of Polish heritage, I am proud to rise and honour Pope, jo Pope St. John Paul II. His life and legacy will always be remembered. Thank you. Thank you. Member Finnish. The member from Kenora Rainy River. Thank you, Speaker. This past week, I traveled to a number of communities in northwestern Ontario where I heard from frontline health care providers and First Nations leadership about the most pressing and urgent health issues facing Northerners. People are struggling right across this province, but Speaker, I have to say that in the North it is different. In the North, we have a patchwork system where services, if provided, are provided in silos across ministries and governments with huge gaping holes left in between. There are wait lists so long for children who have experienced trauma that it effectively shuts the door to effective treatment and traps them into a lifetime of suffering. Diabetes is rampant and so accelerated that within five years of a diabetes-related amputation, the patient will either receive another amputation or be dead. A doctor told me that 34% of pregnant women who she treats in Sioux Lookout are addicted to opioids. Funding is available for drug treatment, but not housing or clean water. Autism is limited and all children with special needs in the far north are either left to the wayside or removed from their community. And most tragically, children as young as 10 years old are committing suicide. I heard from a doctor who described these failings in tears. Another nurse spoke about how it wears on her soul. Speaker, we live in a prosperous province and we are all Ontarians. Northerners deserve a cohesive provincial strategy to address Northern health care and for this government to step up to the plate and deliver on its commitment to treat First Nations people and all Northerners with the dignity and respect afforded to all Ontarians. Thank you. For the member, the member from Kingston and the Island. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As member of the, members of this House are aware, our government committed to bringing 10,000 refugees from Syria, and some are now calling my home of Kingston and the Islands, my community, their new home. To welcome them in the most Canadian way possible, Dr. Waji Khan from the Cataraqui Woods Dentistry uh, Program donated 100 tickets to the most quintessential Canadian pastime, watching a hockey game. I'd like to also thank Dario Paolo and his team for organizing this event. It was an unforgettable moment for all of us, watching, seeing them watch their very first game and in a place where hockey was born nonetheless, and sharing the excitement and energy of our sports spirit and traditions. Their faces were something to behold. The night was only made better by our Kingston Frontenac's incredible skill and talent, resulting in a 5-2 to two win in their last game of the season. Awesome. I also want to extend my sincere gratitude and appreciation to all of the local partners who have been coordinating their efforts and pooling resources to help sponsors' families and enhance settlement efforts, such as the staff and volunteers at Kingston Community Health Centres, Kingston Immigration Partnership, Immigration Services, Kingston and Area, United Way, KFLNA, City of Kingston, Canadian Forces Base, 
our school boards, and so many more. Initiatives such as this are ones that make our community the best place to call home, and it makes me immensely proud to be representing the generous and compassionate constituents of Kingston and the Islands. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. <clears throat> Member Stevens, the member from Nipissing. Thank you, uh, Speaker, and good afternoon. Families across this province are angry at this government's decision to double the drug cost for 92 per cent of all seniors. At a recent Royal Canadian Legion convention held in Dunchurch, North Bay's Preston Quirt and Jim Thompson brought forth a motion expressing their displeasure. It reads, whereas the proposed Ontario budget will have a drastic effect on the health and lifestyle of our senior population and may force more seniors into poverty, therefore be it resolved that we, the members of the Royal Canadian Legion attending the Zone H2 convention, strongly urge the provincial government to reconsider the changes to the Ontario Drug Benefit Program in their proposed budget. Deborah Cooper Berger, chair of OAN HSS, a seniors organization, was clear uh, yesterday when she told our finance committee that seniors will be forced to choose between buying food instead of med medication. Our seniors rely on their medications to stay healthy and out of hospital. Our most vulnerable deserve better. I call on the Premier to stop making seniors pay for her government's waste, mismanagement and scandal and repeal the seniors' drug task. Thank you for the member's statements. The member from Temiskimi, Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. It's uh, the season before planting season. It is farm meeting and farm show season. It was an, an honour for me to attend the March Classic uh, uh, farm uh, meeting put on by Grain Farmers Ontario. But there's one farm show that's near and dear to my heart, and that's the Earlton Farm Show. It's held on April 15th and 16th. And if uh, people are interested in, in agriculture in Northern Ontario and a good place to learn about that is the farm show. And I'd like to sh give a shout out to Melanie Cook. There's lots of volunteers there, but she's the backbone of that show. It's fantastic. And for those of you in Southern Ontario who don't know how to get there, I'll give you some directions. Up 400, up 11, you get to North Bay. That might be the gateway to Northern Ontario, but it's not the gateway to agriculture yet. You'll drive through an hour and a half of pristine northern Ontario. You'll think you're in a Tom Thompson painting. Farmers don't be depressed. Some people like that. Then you'll crest this hill and you'll see 200,000 acres plus of beautiful agricultural land. Keep going. You'll drive by the co-op feed mill. You'll drive by the Grant elevator. You'll drive by the Tem Grain elevator. You'll drive by Thornlow cheese. You'll drive by green tractor. And then there'll be a sign at Earlton to turn left at Cook Elevators. But you might miss that because you'll be so busy counting the bins and looking at the equipment that you might miss that. So I advise you go up another mile, do a U-turn at Brownlee Farm Equipment, and come back and visit the show, and I hope to see you there. Thank you, Speaker. I, I, I don't know if it's parliamentary to correct a statement, and that is uh, you would want a Lauren Harris painting because he comes from my riding. The member from Cambridge. Thank you, Speaker. I wanted to talk about the Cambridge Self-Help Food Bank, whose mission is to help those in my community of Cambridge and North Dumfries Township, offering not just food to those in need, but also support, all the while encouraging self-reliance through various programs and services. One of these programs is the Small Steps to Success, a program designed to help women overcome barriers to employment due to social, economic or educational hardships. I myself had the opportunity and the honour of speaking to this group of women and heard some inspiring stories. Working in conjunction with staff from the Cambridge YWCA, they focus on life skills, job search techniques, education and building health esteem. Last weekend, the executive director, Pat Singleton, got into a Dr. Zeus-inspired hat for the second annual Pat in the Hat fundraiser at the Cambridge Mall. I'm pleased to report that Pat sat in her hat for 31 hours, encouraging shoppers to contribute to this worthy cause, and in all raised $45,000 for the Cambridge Self-Help Food Bank. I want to honour the staff and the executive director of this incredible organization. They go above and beyond the call of duty. They are there at every community event. They inspire others to contribute and to uh, 
help all those that are less fortunate in our community. So many thanks to Executive Director Pat Singleton and some of the staff, Jeff Hunter, Bonnie Deacon, June Anderson, and their other uh, staff and volunteers. Thank you. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Dufferin Caledon. Thank you, Speaker. Are you familiar with Plan Canada's Spread the Net Student Challenge? Ten years ago, Rick Mercer and Belinda Stronach founded the Spread the Net Student Challenge as a friendly competition between Canadian schools to raise funds for the purchase of bed nets to prevent the transmission of malaria. This year, more than 50 schools from across Canada participated and helped raise $80,000, which will go towards the purchase of 8,000 bed nets. Macville Public School in Caledon participated in this year's challenge after grade 8 student Clark Elliott watched the Rick Mercer report that challenged students to get involved in this initiative. Clark thought this was a great cause to get Macville Public School involved, and wow, did they step up to the challenge. As a result of their efforts, Macville Public School, a school of only 247 students, raised $11,000. $454, the highest amount raised by any elementary school across Canada. Rick Mercer's visit to Macville Public School congratulating them for their efforts will be featured on the Rick Mercer Report March 29th. Once again, I want to congratulate and thank Clark Elliott and the students and staff at Macville Public School for supporting the Spread the Net Student Challenge. Well done. Thank you. Further member statements? Member from Davenport. Yes, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to speak about an event held in, my, in celebration of International Women's Day in my riding of Davenport. On March 7, my constituency office hosted an art gallery opening featuring works from the South Asian Women's Centre and Sistering, a women's place. Both of these organizations provide vital services for women as they provide support, a place to talk about women's issues, and a strong community network. At the event, I was also able to recognize Gerbine Bassin and Isa Mello, recipients of the Leading Women, Leading Girls Awards. This award, given by the Minister responsible for women's issues, recognizes the women and girls who have taken a leadership role and made significant contributions in their communities. Gerbine Bassin is the president and founder of Angan Community Centre, a self-sustaining organization that provides vulnerable families in the community with immigration, counselling, housing, food and legal resources. Isa Mello is the founder and editor of Etcetrital magazine, a periodic publication for Brazilian and Portuguese communities. This publication was awarded for the best ethnic magazine of Canada in 2011, 2012 and 2014. I also want to take this time to personally thank MPP for Brampton Springdale, Harinder Mali, for attending my event and engaging with the female community leaders about women's issues. I am so proud to represent these fantastic leading women and organizations in Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you for their member statements. The member from Scarborough, Agent Park. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This year marks the 40th anniversary of Care for Seniors and Community Services Association, a nonprofit charitable organization headquartered in my riding of Scarborough Agent Court, with nine satellite offices from across Toronto, Peel, and York Region. This organization provides quality one-stop multi-services to over 10,000 seniors and adults with physical disability in GTA annually. Care First takes an interdisciplinary approach to deliver comprehensive preventative, primary, acute and long-term care services in the community. This all-under-one-roof model allows frail seniors to remain independent and in a home as long as possible. Besides the 40th anniversary, Mr. Speaker, Care First recently moved into their 52,000-square-foot state-of-art building to better provide a variety of community-based programs like chronic disease management, adult day program, elder abuse prevention and intervention, wellness program, exercise classes, and reducing seniors' isolation and transitional care center. Like any successful organization, Care First has a dedicated staff and volunteers who are committed to provide quality social, health care, and supportive services to seniors and adults with disabilities. And I want to thank all the Care First staff, Mr. Speaker, and over 1,200 active volunteers for caring for the clients and putting their needs first. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, before we move on, uh, between 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock, we had a very special occasion to honour someone that I believe all members uh, appreciate and respect and understand. Uh, in the gallery, in the Speaker's Gallery today, is someone who has retired after 42 years working here. 
uh, she has brought with her friends and family as far away as Jamaica uh, to visit her, and she was kind enough to come back so that we could say goodbye. And I know that the members would join me in thanking and wishing her well, Gloria Richards. let you know that between 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock I shook hands with her and we now have a deal. Uh, I am going to be the ghostwriter and she's going to write a book about all the speakers and the people she's known here. Uh, I, get, I get the preamble and the last chapter and my last chapter is about a page long but Steve Peters chapters two chapters about uh, what he's done. Anyway, a, a very, as you can see, a very uh, kind welcome and thank you very much Gloria for all the work that you've done for the province of Ontario. <clears throat> the member from Elgin, Middlesex, London, on a point of order. Speaker, I'm glad you gave me a few more minutes because I know I, I took some time introducing. Aside from my favourite Liberal, Joan Peters, who's here today, we have Karen McDade, also from St. Thomas. I didn't even recognize Bridget Cousins. She's look, hey Bridget, coming. Don Cousins I mentioned, Mark Cousins, but we got to have Aubrey Cousins stand up. Aubrey is 12. Uh, carries a wreath every Remembrance Day for a family member who is a uh, Silver, uh, Victoria Cross winner. Uh, there's a bridge in Nipissing's uh, riding named after your, your family member. Welcome, Aubrey. Aubrey. Thank you for coming and seeing what uh, legislation is all about. Um, I, I, I definitely appreciate the camaraderie that's being displayed, so I want to blame Steve Peters for Audrey's ability to wear red Converse shoes all the time, so I just wanted to let that be known. There's an inside story for that. I'm older than Steve, and I wore red Connies way before he ever, ever wore them. He invented them. I thank all members for their statements and their kind reception of Gloria. Um, 